Hey guys, this is Andrea. Welcome back. So guys, now as we know, it's beginning to look a lot like Christmas, guys. So let's do a deep dive in. So this one is disability and Christmas. And there's a lot to unpack here. So the first one is, does the person even celebrate Christmas? Um, where I am, Australia, Christmas is summer. And but we have a lot, a very diverse background, even in the city where I live. And some people don't celebrate Christmas or prefer to have Christmas alone. Uh, so that's the first thing that we need to consider with disability. But I'm going to talk on the premise that the person does celebrate her uh, type of thing has been raised in that tradition. So guys, starting off with the Little Eats, we're seeing a trend now with shopping centres um, doing Century Santa. So that's during the general shopping hours, Century sessions, it can be a bit later in the, earlier in the morning or later in the afternoon. Um, so, and that is their, a Century session generally in Australia is where the music is turned off noise is kept to a minimum and there is less general hazards in the shopping center so there's less deliveries so less chances of boxes being in aisles for people who might have vision problems or service animals that need to navigate those animals they i know some stores are starting to have casuals that will run and get you something as well and the other day i also saw a shout out to woolworths I saw uh, trolleys that have a wheelchair embedded into them, an adult wheelchair. Don't know how hard that would be to push, but shout out to Woolies for doing that. I know my two local major shopping centres are both doing sensory centres as well. Um, jump on your local shopping centre's website because sometimes you can actually book a time online as well. Um, but also, so it's something to consider so that being said now food this is a big one with disabilities because a lot of disabilities there can be food intolerances food allergies food issues um for someone without a disability just even a chronic illness so i would say if you're having them over for christmas dinner for christmas lunch for brunch anytime over the holiday season Check what they can and can't eat. That's simple. Check what they can. And if a person with a disability has had trauma around Christmas, make it a safe space. Have a space where they can just chill. Is there some food? Um, if they don't want to engage, they don't want to engage. But is there some food? Is there some traditions that they would like to start as an adult? Um, if they're in disability accommodations, this would be a great idea for service providers to be able to start their own traditions, have their own Christmas parties. The other thing is consider the person's budget. So you might be a person who buys everyone in your circle a gift, but they might not be able to afford it. So, and especially post COVID, some alternative ideas I've seen is doing a secret Santa, just buying for the children, or doing a second hand one, or combining the two, doing a second hand secret Santa as well. Um, I've seen that done really, really well in some of the groups I've belonged to. Um, or getting a bit creative, using gifts and talents that they have. I'm fairly handy with a sewing machine, so I sew a lot of my gifts. I also paint. These are perfectly acceptable gifts and buying stuff because, guys, we all in the Western world have a bit too much stuff. And Christmas at its core is about spending time with friends and family and loved ones, and as well as well as I'm the obvious reason it was started, guys. And that brings me to the next point: is don't force the tr your traditions on them if you're a support worker 
you can suggest it, but don't force their tradition, your traditions on the client. Guys, that's um, a really big one. I've done um, difference between support and care and what is a bad support worker, so I'll link them in the below. But coming around to the holidays, um, there might be someone, especially people with a psychosocial disability or mental illness, the holidays is a very difficult time for a lot of people. And I know that some churches also do like a dinner on the day. Um, sometimes you've got to book in because of COVID. Sometimes it's a take all comments. So I would check. And guys, that's if you have the time and bandwidth, going and volunteering at those things, are you get so much more out of them than the people who are coming. Um, as well it's just the joyous time as well to connect with the community um, as well and another thing is um, that's very unique to Toowoomba is something that we do as raising money for the local suicide hotline is um, because it is so hot we light up one of the parks with Christmas lights and you can walk through um, so it's called the Christmas Wonderland and they raise money for a local suicide prevention hotline as well as local charities that support families during tough times as well. Um, it is the whole community gets involved, all of the local youth groups take tickets, take at the door, take donations. Um, I know High Home Ice Cream for a donation has ice cream, lions gets involved, the local girl guides, the scout groups, the local dance groups and put on performances, choirs put on performances as well. Um, I do know some of the licensed Disney princesses you can take photos with as well for the kids. So all things that you can do that are low cost but um, they also are starting to bring in a sensory session as well because it does get quite crowded and quite overwhelming as well. So guys, just a few things to remember is food allergies and especially um, and um, lost what I was saying go. So food allergies can be a huge one as well around this time of year so it doesn't take much to pick up the phone and say hey what are your allergies or whatever as well and guys um, my family does a bring a plate and it's a really good way to cut down on the cost for Christmas is bring everyone bringing a plate um, as well so I know that's becoming more and more common post COVID as well and guys this just brings me to my next point there's something in my garden where I feel I'm that's has beautiful fragrance but it's making my nose itchy guys that is accessibility so if you have someone in your life like my dad is older he uses a wheelie walker so if you have someone with a physical disability who uses a mobility aid consider the venue that you're using is it accessible um, we're having it at my sister's place they have ramps into their garage where we'll be having Christmas dinner um, as well. So that's a big thing is that, and, but we always put Dad's Willy Walker where it isn't in the way, but it is accessible. Um, and that is something that you need to consider. If there's someone in a wheelchair, don't assume that they can have it at their place, that especially if they're in NDIA accommodation as well but something to consider is toilets are the toilets accessible will they have a support worker on them on the day and just having a think about the support worker do they have family so they'll be missing time with their family on the day do um, you get that support worker a present is something that I'd encourage you to encourage to talk with the service providers what is their policy around gifts is a really good one to know coming up to holidays as well because ethically um, I know a general rule I've had when I've been working is 
anything over ten dollars has to be reported to a boss as well um, then so toilets accessible can the person move in and around your house as well in their aid they might be an ambulatory user so that's another thing as well and just in generally including those who might be in disability accommodation who might not have friends or family see what they're doing another one at the table doesn't really hurt at Christmas guys um, I hope that gives you some ideas on how you can support people with a disability and just a final note that I've forgotten that is remember some people with disabilities that had late diagnoses especially psychosocial disabilities so that might be autism that might be ADHD that might be a mental illness they might not have the greatest memories around Christmas because until the NDIS came in disability you had to fund your own things as well and your own aids there was a bit of state assistance but it varied state by state as well so they might not have had the greatest experience around Christmas um, I know my that's how the Christmas Wonderland started um, one of our local funeral parlors actually does a Christmas service for people who are experiencing Christmas without um, a loved one for the first time that year um, as well so I'd encourage you if you're a service provider to have a look because I know that some of the churches do do memorial services to remember those who are missing at Christmas and on P over on Pinterest I've seen some beautiful traditions about having a extra chair at the table to remember them if it's that first time um, having photos of them as well um, so guys um, thank you for watching please like share and subscribe hope you're liking the new formats without the long intro and guys I will see you guys in the next video